Welcome to 10 Minutes, another episode, and I'm really, really happy to uh, have an exciting guest with some exciting topics, uh, sufficiency, greed, uh, regeneration, and uh, to help us steer this conversation, I have a very long time friend uh, from Thailand, uh, Nuri uh, Suri Kul, who wears a lot of different hats, uh, a, a, a thinker, a designer, an advisor, and also a representative of sustainable brands in Thailand. Welcome, Louis. Sawadee Hello, Thomas. How are you? And hello, everyone around the, the other I'm side. Good. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I'm I'm good. I'm so happy you could join this call. And, and I'm actually just going to jump into it because one of the things I'm curious about these days is obviously that we live in a planet where we are far exceeding the planetary footprint. Um, so, and, and, and so interesting to see in Thailand, it's a fast growing uh, economy. How, how do you think we can get this balance right? I think Thailand is like a, right now, similar to everywhere in the world. I think uh, we used to be in the boom time that everything uh, went so well. But after the pandemic, the, the COVID, so everything just like uh, going down. The economy that used to be bright, used to be shining, now is getting to the boom day. So I think in Thailand, if you recall that every time I'm talking about sustainability, I always mention about sufficiency. Right now, I think people in my country start to to listen more and try to find the real meaning of the sufficiency economy. So, so do you think I, that's, I, I love that thought. So actually, this idea that some of the greed and some of the earlier aspirations, thanks now to economy, we actually have to prioritize differently and think, what do we actually need? Do, mm-hmm. do, do you see that right now? Is that- I think I can, I, I, I can see that a bit, but I think that what I can see uh, clearer is uh, people start to realize that no one can live alone, okay? Even though you are like uh, number one in the market, the COVID taught you that if your audience, if your customer doesn't have any money and you are the number one, you still cannot survive. So it's very important that people to start thinking about the symbiosis, thinking about uh, see the relationship between every life that they are connected. So in the past, uh, people used to see only themselves, like I'm, I'm the only one who's going to come up onto the mountain. Right now, they know that they cannot just go there alone. So they start to looking back and, and find friends try to find someone to go along with them. So I think right now, uh, people start to recognize that a bit of greed is good. If they know how to control greed, it could be the motivation to go faster, go better. But if they cannot control that greed, they will just go alone. And I think right now when I say alone, I mean, going down alone, not going up alone. So I can see a lot of uh, big business, a lot of people start talking about how can we con- how can we close the gap between the rich and the poor? How can we make sure that everyone has enough to survive so we all can get into the stage of the regeneration, stage of sustainability together? Not just me or you. Mm-hmm. And 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 I, and I love that. And I think there is a conversation right now with a lot of focus on uh, personal wealth. Obviously, this gap between those who actually live at the bottom, who seem to be very hit by the crisis, mm-hmm. and those who during COVID, uh, some at least who who did see um, some uh, some prosperity. Um, so so. How does sufficiency economy work? Because isn't this something that's counterintuitive to 
our human being or is sufficiency something that's part of the human being? I, I think first you have to understand that when we, when we talk about sufficiency, it's about sufficiency economy. So it's more like uh, the end result of what we try to change from the, like a capitalist into the sufficiency economy. For me, what is more important than sufficiency economy is a mindset to make us get into that point. And that mindset is about moderation. So I think uh, if, if you understand the real meaning, the wisdom of moderation, you would know that moderation is a way, it's a mindset, it's a methodology, it's everything that you can use to control greed. Because I didn't say that you should stop eating. I just say that, Thomas, don't eat too much. I'm hungry too. Yeah. Can you share something for me yeah. to eat? Even though you have a right to eat it all up, but please, I am so hungry. So if you eat like a moderately, maybe your health can get even better. And you can have one more people love you more. So I think uh, the nice thing about uh, sufficiency is the mindset of the moderation. I, I absolutely love that. And especially now when we're soon going into the climate summit uh, in December, uh, where obviously Global South um, are sort of saying, wait a moment, uh, look at our footprint, uh, carbon footprint, look at your carbon footprint. So, so uh, probably also a message to all our viewers uh, today is, you know, how, how do we actually live uh, with climate moderation? How do we think about that? What, what do we need? So I think that's a really, really good message. And, and how does that then tie to together with, um, how does that then tie together with regeneration? This, this, this concept of, 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 um, of building up again, of regenerating. I, I think, uh, in, in Thailand, if you're talking about the sense of the Buddhism, okay, we, we are the Buddhism. So the sense of moderation, the concept of moderation, and the concept of uh, regeneration, or something that sometimes we call it, uh, is similar concept as a uh, reincarnation. So uh, I, we, we always, as a Buddhism, we always uh, think about other life. We always try to heal something. When we, actually, in fact, when we say that everyone should try to be moderate, because we know that sharing is a way to heal the system, right? So I think, in a sense, uh, sufficiency, moderation, if we use it properly and we really understand the concept of moderation. It could be something that can take you to the road of regeneration, something that you can uh, bring back the good old day, not the good old day. We're talking about the past, the present, and the future, right? So in the present, if you know how to do anything in the moderation mindset, it means that you can make sure that your future can be as healthy as in the past. I, I probably say it maybe too conceptually, but I, I know that you understand what I try to say here. You know, I, I, I absolutely love it. And, and what's, what really resonates with me is in a time where everybody is looking for answers, there is actually wisdom that we have had for hundreds and hundreds of years that we can apply today. Today, I can apply moderation mm -hmm. uh, to read regeneration. And I, I think that's, uh, uh, I think, a, a strong message today, both for us as individuals, but also in terms of businesses, um, even 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 gover governments. And, and so just as a closing, yeah. May, may I interrupt? I, I just thought of something and I want to share it. And I think that the when you try to uh, do something about the regenerative uh, regeneration, being moderate is probably more realistic, right? Because uh, if you do anything too extreme, yeah. 
you stop using this you stop uh, doing something that will damage the whole ecosystem maybe you destroy the the balancing so moderation for me more realistic more realistic to solve the problem we don't say that okay it's like the concept of the plant base or something if the whole world everyone go for the plant base I, I I'm I'm so believe that the ecosystem cannot survive, right? Because we need the balancing between the green and the meat. Uh, we just have to know how to make it like uh, in the right uh, proportion. Okay. So for me, if you're talking about climate change, you want to change behavior of the people. Moderation is something that more realistic, and give them the power. That they still can go back and look at their behavior and direct the behavior into the new direction. But if you go to someone and say, "Hey, stop doing that. That's a bad thing," you give them no choice. But if you go and say, "Thomas, think about it. I think you do this too much. Can you go to do something that more balancing? So you are the one who can think through." And find your own way how to uh, change your behavior. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, absolutely, and I think those were very, very um, great uh, final closing words. We only have ten minutes, but this idea that if we want a better health, uh, it is about as Nui pointed me uh, eating in moderation, thinking about your health. And I think this also counts for uh, climate and a lot of the issues that we are faced with today. So this is a one very um, simple and 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 intuitive recipe uh, for going forward. Nui, thank you so much again um, for joining us here today, um, all the way from Thailand. And um, to all our listeners, uh, do feel free to uh, follow us on social media, and please do look Nui Circle up as well because she has a lot of wisdom to share. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Gratitude.